Angelus, St. Peter's Square, March 1, 2020. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. On this first Sunday of Lent, the Gospel narrates that after being baptized in the River Jordan, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Jesus prepares himself to begin his mission as proclaimer of the kingdom of heaven. And just as Moses and Elijah had done in the Old Testament, he does so by fasting for 40 days. He enters into Lent. At the end of this period of fasting, the tempter, the devil, breaks in and tries to put Jesus to the test three times. The first temptation arises when Jesus is hungry. The devil suggests, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. A challenge. But Jesus' response is clear. Man shall, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He refers to when Moses reminded the people of their long journey in the desert, through which they learned that their lives depended on the word of God. The devil then makes a second attempt. He becomes more astute, and he too quotes the sacred scripture. The strategy is clear. If you are so confident in God's power, then experience it. The scripture itself affirms that you will be aided by the angels. But also in this case, Jesus does not allow himself to be confounded because those who believe do not put God to the test, but rather they entrust themselves to God's goodness. Thus, to the words of the Bible that Satan interpreted for his own purposes, Jesus responds with another quotation. Again, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Lastly, the third attempt <clears throat> reveals the devil's true reasoning. Since the coming of the kingdom of heaven marks the beginning of his own defeat, the evil one wants to distract Jesus from accomplishing his mission by offering him a perspective of political messianism. But Jesus rejects the idolatry of power and human glory, and in the end, drives the tempter away and says, Be gone, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. At this point, the angels draw near to serve Jesus, who is faithful in handing himself over to the Father. This teaches us one thing. Jesus does not dialogue with the devil. Jesus responds to the devil with the word of God, not with his own words. In temptation, we often begin to dialogue with temptation, to dialogue with the devil. Yes, I may do this. Then I will go to confession. Then this, then that. We must never dialogue with the devil. Jesus does two things with the devil. He either sends him away or, like in this case, he responds with the word of God. Be attentive to this. Never dialogue with temptation. Never dialogue with the devil. Day two, Satan breaks into people's lives to tempt them with his enticing, enticing proposals. He mixes his own voice to the many other voices that try to tame our conscience. Messages come to us from many places, inviting us to allow ourselves to be tempted, to experience the intoxication of transgression. Jesus' experience teaches us that temptation is an attempt to walk paths that are alternative to those of God. Do this, there's no problem, then God forgives. One day of joy for yourself, but it is a sin. No, it's nothing. Alternative paths, paths that give us the impression of self-sufficiency, of enjoying life, an end in itself. However, all this is illusory. 
we soon realize that the more we distance ourselves from God, the more defenseless and helpless we feel when facing life's big problems. May the Virgin Mary, the mother of he who crushed the head of the serpent, help us during this Lenten period to be vigilant when confronted with temptation, not to submit ourselves to any idol of this world and to follow Jesus in the struggle against evil. Thus we too will be victorious as Jesus. Thank you, Ramon. You're welcome. Thank you. So did you learn anything new with this Angelus proclamation by Pope Francis? Never dialogue with temptation. Never dialogue with Satan. Yes. Yes. Never dialogue with temptation. And, you know, when you make the analogy, never dialogue with the devil. So the temptation comes from the devil. So, geez, uh, the Pope gives us uh, some examples of dialoguing, no? Uh, yes, yes, Jerome. Hi, Tita. But Hi. from the first place, we, yeah, the, we, we know that never dialogue with the Satan. But in the first place, when we commit this, ano, do we recognize Satan ba? Di nga, no. eh, we deny Di. nga. And I, it is yes. our thoughts. This is my... Uh, but it never came into my mind that this is Satan. So that That's is, true. of course, his uh, deception na only later on na uh, ma-realize natin. But we dialogue by ourselves actually we we yes. we yes. uh you yun yung ano eh, but we don't accept or no it's not satan <laughs> may mga gan pa nga tayo di ba so we we confess but we do uh yun po yung realization ko na oh, oh okay lang naman to manood ako ng ano <laughs> porn and then i will just uh uh confess, confess or ano hindi pa ulit ulit yeah. na yung confession di ba O, paminsan nga, oy ano lang to? Binyalsin naman to. Pero malala pala yun. Hindi pala binyalsin. So, mga ganong klaseng ano, dialogue. But, uh, yeah. another thing, Tita, that this from the, ano rin, the second uh, temptation when the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. So, he, he's also, um, uh, alam niya rin ng ano eh, ang word of God. So ito, yes. Uh, yes. ito parang na <laughs> when, when 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 I uh, of course when I was still ano pa hindi rin ako equipped sa word of God. Yung mga relatives ko na born again who are very equipped with the word of God and telling me, "Oh, where in the Bible is purgatory? Where in the Bible do you mga ganyan, Exodus o tingnan mo, sumasamba ka sa idol." Parang I'm not saying they are ano no. <laughs> parang ganun na nangyayari din eh na uh, I'm not saying they are but but the truth is may uh, marami rin born again nag-convert din eh sa Catholic <laughs> but yung mga Catholic na nag-convert sa mga ibang sekta is it's because of the lack of knowledge lack of uh, catechism yes. so yes. that's just my ano lang po realization Thank you, Jerome. Thank you. Uh, Milagros, did you want to say something? Yes. Uh, dear Manu, I have a question. Yes. Is, ten is temptation part of the test uh, or not? I'm uh, just it a little confused. Of okay. the test to show our love okay. and faithfulness. Uh, thank yes. you. Okay. Temptation is really the permissive will of God, right? Just like the temptation to look at the tree of the fruit, or sorry, the fruit of the tree of um, knowledge of good and evil, it is the Lord does not tempt you. That's number one. Temptation does not come from God. Temptation comes from the devil. But if temptation comes from the devil, and that is his work, why doesn't God stop it? Therefore, he allows it. He allows it so that we are able to show proof of love. You see, 
it is the same thing that Jesus experienced. The devil comes to him and tempts him, but he is able to overcome that temptation which have the heavenly father allowed for him at the height of his hunger uh, um, the heavenly father allowed him to to experience this temptation and remember he's a human being and he becomes hungry so um why does the father allow this temptation for the spirit of man to rely on the father for for man to really say it is God who is doing the battle in me. But if you do not remember that, then you will succumb. But if you rely on, on the love of God, and he has a lot and lots of doses of love for you, then you can rise above it and you can say, Lord, Father, I have overcome this for love of you. So you see how man is brought to a higher, higher state. And, and um, I hope that answers your question. Temptation, number one, never comes from God, but it is allowed. It's allowed by the Lord so that we are able to realize that our weak human nature is not really that weak because we are being propped and supported by the grace of God to overcome the temptation. And in Corinthians, um, it is said that there is no temptation that is too difficult. No, uh, God allows the temptation but always shows you a way out. Okay, God shows you a way out of every temptation. Does that answer your question, Milagros? Thank you, Malu. Yeah, I uh, would say probably fusion again, the importance of fusion in this uh, weak yes. moments. Um, yes, yes. Uh, Yes. yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, remember, in the hours of the Passion, we always, we also say, Jesus and Mary, I commend my soul to you every time. You know, I forget this also myself, but every time there's a temptation to do this, to, you know, to, to talk to yourself, oh, what's wrong with that? You know, when you start to defend yourself against yourself, then that means that it is a temptation. That's the sign. Because otherwise, that, that is a sign because there is no peace within you. There's like a battle within you. So if you try to defend yourself against yourself, then that is a sign that temptation is there. Uh, if there were no temptation, there would be peace inside of you. No? Okay. Uh, yes, Ramon. Okay. Um, this is sort of like a follow-up question to my earlier question, no? Uh, that Satan, that's Lucifer, nga. Okay, so how about in the in the Garden of Eden, that serpent? So there's obviously um, the devil there, no? Was that also Lucifer, na? In, yes. In the, yes. He he. And remember that the serpent is a creature of God. Yeah, yeah. A no. creature of God, the bawala na ginawa si Lord na. Yeah, no, that's 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 clear to me, no. So that's yeah. Lucifer mm -hmm. as well. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so now this leads to another question because these things are not really written in in any book. I, I guess in the, maybe it's in the Revelation, but it's kind of cryptic about the language in Revelation. Yes, yes. Um. So just to clarify, no. So okay, so Lucifer and his follower angels. Um, decide not to serve man. They, they 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 said no. We will not serve a creature that is lower than our stature in heaven. And so they're banished from from heaven, right? And so a third of the angels fall. And then what I cannot un, uh, grasp is how did this happen when before Adam's fall there was no reason yet for a holy trinity, right? Hmm? I mean, there's God, he this, but and there's God the Father, right? Was there already a Holy Trinity? Jesus already, yes, they, Jesus they, already they, the Son, even before the yes, of Adam. Yes, yes, of course, of course. This is the concept of 
of um, our God, three persons in one God. God cannot be alone because he his um his his activity is to love. And if he were alone, who would he love? He cannot love himself because that would be what narcissism. I see. Okay. So, so, okay. Yeah. So God God begets. No, he does not bring. He, he is not. You know, this this word begets is also beyond me. But co-eternal with him is the begetting of his son. So he pours his love for himself to the son. And the son returns that same love that he receives from his father to eternal the father. Of love. Yes, so that is what we call the eternal exchange of love. And this love that they generate the Holy Spirit. Proceeds the Holy Spirit. So right from the very start, when there was no start, when we cannot put a time, there was already the family of the Trinity. Yes. yes. And that was already the start of Lucifer's resistance as well? He started to resist when he, he uh, it came to his knowledge that, that the son, the second person of the Holy Trinity would become a man. Ah. That's when he started to rebel. Why will I serve man? Okay, huh? okay. Okay. So, okay. Now it's very clear. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Sorry. You, thank, yeah. you. thank you. And it's okay. Bambina. Yes, Bambina. Yeah, I just, uh, just some thoughts and I'm, uh, I wonder if this is um, on the correct thinking. No? Uh, regarding temptation or God's um, allowing temptation to, to exist because God is all love. And so when he created man, he created him in love. But love must have a response yes. for it to be love. Yes. So when God in the Garden of Eden said, do not touch because this is not good for you. Do not eat. So God wanted a response from Adam. Mm -mm. So, But he didn't create that temptation. He, he, he gave, there was, there was a tree in existence mm -mm. okay but 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 he but that while he allowed that to exist he did not say oh here oh, uh be tempted no it was it was the response of um and um adam did not think he, he was given a a command not to eat because it was going to be bad for him it was a devil who I know presented it to Adam. Ah, you look at this, see, it's alluring, it's this and that. Mm -hmm. But all the time, God is asking us, choose the devil or choose me, death yes. or life. Yes. Diba? So, yes. so it's just that the cycle of response. God gives love, and God wants us to respond in love. Yes. Respond in love. We must be obedient. Yes. Yes. In a nutshell, that is what it is. Uh, the question of Mamina Luisa to Jesus was, why did Adam fall into sin yeah? when he had all that perfect knowledge? And the answer of Jesus was, he forgot to love me. Yes. He forgot to love. That, that's exactly what you're saying. Yes. When you were, your eyes are elsewhere, then it's easy to tempt you. But if you like, you know, but for men, how hard for us to focus on God, right? And that's why, as Milagros had said, it is the fusion. It is the fusion that makes me, that, that you know, it, it, um, it reminds me, kinakalabit ako all the time. When I am like, I said something unkind or maybe my thoughts were uncharitable, the fusion reminds me. And then I'm able to go back. Men, and this is my response of love. I want to love the Lord so that I am not tempted to go here and there and to be dispersed just like what the devil wants us to be. Mm. Right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bambina.